blind sight. This is a phenomenon briefly described by Ramachandran in Chapter 4. Despite being blind, both patients, Diane and Drew, exhibited this weird coordinative ability called blind sight. So, upon request, these people could force reactions to objects presented in the blind areas of their visual fields. Reflexes to these objects would then spontaneously surface without conscious perception of the individual. So in other words, if the patient were asked to orient an object to correspond with another, or to block an incoming visual stimulus with a limb, they could do so with high accuracy, despite being traditionally blind. What were the neurophysiological issues that led these patients to exhibit the phenomena? Well, both had damage in the striate cortex, or the primary visual cortex, aka V1, located in the occipital lobe. There are several different types of ganglion cells, there's magnocellular and parvocellular in particular, that project out of the optic nerve and into the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. Magnocellular cells carry information from the rods in your retina. This subset is thus responsible for perception of movement, depth, and tiny differences in brightness. Now parvocellular cells carry information from the cones in your retina, so it follows that this subset deals with perception of color, and fine details also, such as the form of objects. It's believed that the phenomenon of blind sight is dependent on how these ganglion cells operate in the LGN. So in essence, parvocellular output from the LGN is very important in area V1 of the striate due to the color and form information it transmits. However, magnocellular output is less affected by damage to V1, not just because of the type of information it carries, but because this information also goes to higher areas of the visual cortex, such as V2 and V3, but also V5, or the middle temporal region, and then up to the posterior parietal cortex. Sound familiar? This is the old where-how pathway in action. Therefore, patients with blind sight are still activating this pathway despite damage to V1, inhibiting further parvocellular connectivity to the inferior temporal cortex, or the what pathway. So, the lateral geniculate nucleus is very important for every aspect of the visual system. The visual cortex, meh, it's good for traditional sight, but it's not everything. Finally, this raises the question of what particularly constitutes a conscious visual awareness. This question has much to do with the philosophical problem of binding. How do these multiple visual pathways combine into a singular conscious experience? It hasn't been answered, and it may never be, but my gut tells me that visual consciousness has something to do with the phylogenetically newer modules of the human brain, in other words, the most recent additions. Since the visual cortex is relatively newer and seemingly linked to visual consciousness, this seems like a pretty strong correlation.